Hello everyone, hello everybody, my name is JS, but you may call me game and welcome to Defender's Quest Valley of the Forgotten on New Game Plus. Episode 11, 11, 10 freaking episodes of the past have come and gone, and now it's time for more. Wasn't able to do any of the past levels over the past couple days. I recorded the 10th episode on <sighs> Saturday. It was uploaded Sunday, and on Sunday I had to do a ton of work. So yeah, with it, and I'm recording on a Monday, so I can upload it on a Tuesday. So now that that's been said, let's begin. Sheep, really? That's like the best you could come up with. Why is she being pissy about this? Would she rather die? Look, I'm just trying to keep people from getting eaten, okay? What do you think is going to happen when we, like, fail to find these magical sheep you promised? I just said what popped into my head. And the first thing that popped into your head was sheep. Does this look like a pasture to you? No. The first thing that popped into my head was, yeah, take the annoying skinny girl with the black hair that doesn't ever shut up. What doesn't shut up, me or my hair? Either of you! You know, I don't even, like, need to come up with a witty retort, because that statement is just so innately stuck. Okay, this is just... I am impressed. <clears throat> if you keep forgetting your voice, I can't do the feminine voices. It's very annoying. Why do you think I talk with... I talk as her in my normal voice. I'm impressed as well. Not many people know about the secret sheep, sto sheep stores underneath Quaid cities. They're usually just for when the city is besieged. But in this case, I think we can make an exception. I just hope they haven't gone feral. Feral? With the city abandoned for so long, they've had a little to eat but cave fungus in each other. They get nasty. Hello! Someday I would really like to meet a horde of something that doesn't try to kill me. From the looks of it, today is not that day. So yeah, they're carnivorous sheep. Okay! Okay, so we have fast, like normal sheep. What am I saying fast? That regen their goddamn health. Of course! Okay, I want Miss Twine a lot. Be. Uh, here. I say there because the upgrades that she's gonna get will more or less counter that. They don't do damage, so. Let's put you here. Marcos can go here. No, actually, he'll go here. Go. There we go. Look at them. Look at them bastards. Beating their sheepy ways. Let me 
just do this. That was funny. I went. <laughs> that was really short, actually. I didn't think that would be that short. It felt short, at least. Here, uh, yep. Okay. Get that, get that. Here we go. My children feast and grow strong. I can't do a deep woman accent. So, I forget what she said anyway. We have upheld our uh, end of the bargain, Nero. Very well. I remember this voice now. I will take you to this royal records room, but I have a file stipulation. When you are done, you must take us with you out of this pit. You have wings, can't you just fly out? <clears throat> you ask too many questions, mortal. Even one as useful as you may be burned for offense. Fine, we would be happy to have you with us. As you should be. But all you must but all of you must fight like everyone else. You drive a hard bargain, mortal. Your audacity amuses me. As long as my children are compensated for their labors, we shall bring fire to your enemies. I don't know if I should turn this down at all. So now I can go here, yay! Here is nesting ground, stocked with treasure, and home to a young. <clears throat> Over the years, we have collected many mortal arms and armors in our horde. We have no use for them, but they are quite shiny, and we like shiny things. I'm sure a warband like your own could put them to great use. For the right price, of course. Man, that sheep stew is fantastic! I regurgitated that for my children. Got any more? Oh. Slack, you shrink. Wow! Are you kidding me? Wow, I have to buy a ton of those. I have to buy a bludgeon. What? Wait, what? What? Why do I have to buy a bludgeon? Okay, you are getting it. 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 So. Lol. Um. Now, what do you have equipped? Because I'm pretty sure you have a magic one. We are leaving now. Elder Bacal. Music transition! <laughs> it was frighteningly simple, really, to destroy the world. Zelimir took me out, far into the eastern desert. 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 To a dark cave. We came to a great crystal, thirty feet tall. There, we bled ourselves on the face of the rock. The wound was never healed. At first, I thought nothing had happened. But Zelimir, he entered some kind of trance. I waited. The sun set, and all around us I heard the howling of wind desert beasts. Still, Zelimir didn't move. I'm kind of getting tired of doing the voice acting, but it adds character! Has it bores me if I don't? Did I just go against what I just said? I don't know. Not even when a great wolf leaped into our camp. I ran it through with my sword and it spasmed its last breath at Zelimir's feet. He did not even notice. We passed three nights like this. Did he at least have something to drink? Oh, never mind. At the dawn of the third day, he blinked three times and stood up. I just shocked myself. Our problems are solved, he said. When we returned to camp, the enemy force was completely, completely routed. The plague had begun. Each day he spent more like that, entranced, shut off to this world and opened to somewhere else. Within a month, half the Quaid Empire lay dead, dying, or worse. The horizon blazed with the glow of the corpse fires. Cities tore themselves apart. I saw things even the war had not prepared me for. I knew it had to stop. 
But Zelimir, he was no longer open to my words. Each day he stayed longer in his trances, until at last, he ceased to come out of them at all. I waited three days. Each day, thousands died. Finally at dawn, I walked into his tent. He did not notice me. He no longer noticed anything. I ran him through. I buried him in the desert dust. But the plague continued, spilling over borders, consuming everything in its path. On my long march home, I ran across a band of Selene monks. I cast my sword away and threw it at their f myself at their feet. I have lived a monk's life ever since. But now, the friend I killed has returned the monster. This is the dark magic we continued with, we contend with, Azra. I pray these records were to keep, hold the key to its destruction. I can't talk today. Bleh. So do we all, Elder. You're starting to sound like me, because um, the guy who's doing the voice... Oh, it's a quest! The guy who's doing the voice acting is uh, losing his touch. Monocles! Every time I know how he talks. Azra? <clears throat> hey, you finally got that whole first name basis thing down. I don't mean to judge your choice of allies, but your <clears throat> psychopathic enemy princess is about to get us all killed. Rena isn't that bad once you get past all the murder crazy. Except that the murder crazy is all there is. Marcos! You should try talking to her sometime. Yeah, a former guard and a former prisoner are just made to be best friends. And then, using the powers of friendship, we can catch a rainbow and ride out of this pit. Out of the pit. Is there a point to all of this? Well, apparently there's some sort of desecrated Koi temple down here. Rena found out about it and it's gotten a little... What's the word? You're a blaring. Is there an objective that means... Let's cast aside the... Flimsy facade, facade of normalcy to reveal the po boiling pot of crazy soup house beneath. Azra! What? It's not fair! Rena's not Sherry! What on earth are you talking about? Rena found this super cool old shrine thing and there's like a... What's an honor that comes out after a bajillion? A bajillion and one? Yeah, there's like a bajillion and one revenant in there. Rena won't let us fight at them. Yeah. Did it ever occur to you that maybe I don't want to fight any more monsters that absolutely... than absolutely necessary? Unable to comprehend. Strange. Foreign logic. Anyways, Rena said that the whole place was hers and she would kill anyone else that tried to go in there. It's not fair! You should go melt her face! Always with the face melting. See? She's so crazy, she's scaring the other crazies. I suppose I ought to get down to the bottom of this. Ugh. Is it a... Is it a numinous... What? No! How dare they? They put it in the mount! Okay, I guess there wasn't any room, so... I'll let it slide. Rena and Astra purify a defiled quaid fire. Wait! Oh, pissing... Balls! I am the daughter of fire. Well, Ezra says she doesn't care who you are. You have to share. That's not what I said. I alone can drive these abominations out. I will not purify this temple of one enemy only to fit it with another. Only to fill it with another. Rena, listen to me. You can't do this alone. I am Rena Lan Laxami. Laxmi. Shut up. I am the High Priestess of the Flame. I will not suffer enemies to enter the house of fire, dead or living. Rena, just let me. Azra, don't. I will kill you. This is not something I have a choice about. None may ever enter the temple save the knowers of truth. I have sworn to uphold faith and honor by any means necessary. Do not make me kill a friend. And how are you going to kill those revenant without me? I will find a way. Do you want to die? Is that what this is about, Rena? I think of only serving the flame. Up. Oh. oh, and you're going to serve the flame by getting yourself killed. By ending the Quaid line forever. Are you going to stand before judgment and say, I was afraid of the task before me and despised the tools you gave me, so I chose to die. That's not true. Really, because that's what it looks like from here. Your epita ep epitaph. Were we too afraid to rebuild her kingdom, she chose to join the defeated. That's not true. 
then take me with you. Take me with you. But you go in there on your own, and the only thing you're helping is the enemy. Whose side are you on? I always serve the flame. Then let's go purify a temple. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm not going to like this level because I have to use her alone. Have fun for me. Okay. My dad! This is so fair. I have to conserve my skills. Oh, this is going to be very fair to me. I'm more or less just let them all just go. Get as many as possible, and when she starts hitting them, I'll unleash this. Yay! I did it! Okay, good. Now then. Oh god, that's probably not gonna... Eh, it's off, it's off. <laughs> Push him back. Uh, crystal, right there. Boom! Okay. I know this is really annoying, but I don't... Okay. I'm just gonna put on a half speed. At least it's just not as spazzy. Ball, 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 ball. Okay, I'll put it on normal. Yeah, that's just how fast they move normally. I know, it's so different. for nothing! I panicked for nothing. Oh god. Wow, I feel like a little baby. But I was allowed to panic because I didn't know what was going to happen. <clears throat> How dare you come here! I guess the last level is gonna be next level. Have we forgotten puny? Have we forgotten puny mortal? That was Rena's. Oh my God. Have we forgotten puny mortal? Who here holds the secret of fire? You are a perversion, a distortion, a blasphemy. Rena, she helped. When? When? When did she help in that? Every breath you draw defiles this place. Get out. The gods go where they please. Get out! Wow. You wanna talk? Words solve nothing. I hope that's not true, otherwise I kinda picked the wrong career. You had a choice. How quaint. Every little hovel we visit, every collection of miserable shacks, I feel the eyes of the survivors on me. They know who I am. They think I'm going to lead them back into our cities, back into a world that doesn't even exist anymore. This, this is where I belong. This temple turned char... charnel house. Those miserable scattered survivors look to me to save them and I can offer them no more protect- That thing is so annoying. And I can offer them no more protection than this ruined shrine. Look at me. A captive since childhood. A prisoner. A... 
You don't understand the things they did to us. No, the things you did to us. And always in my mind I can hear the screams and I know that they are my screams. And I close my eyes and I see my sister standing in the blood. Rena, um, and a son. It beats down and down and I wrap my fingers around the broken arrowhead and wait for him to turn his neck. And now I am alone, out of all of them. I am the last, I am the last of the royal house. I can't even rule my own mind. How can I ever hope to lead a nation? What can I ever hope to do for my people? Rena, I am a librarian. You are a warrior princess of Quaid. Okay. You were born to lead. I was born to stack books and get stared at creepily by the head scribe. Yeah. I am so lost and terrified leading us. I can barely hold everything together. Sometimes it's all I can do to remember. All I can it's sometimes it's all I can do to remember to breathe. Do to remember to breathe. I wouldn't follow me. I look at you and I wish I had one tenth of your courage and determination. It's probably a good thing I don't. Otherwise, I'd be forging an empire instead of just escaping. Thanks, Ezra. <clears throat> I guess I was wrong about words. You want a hug? What's a hug? <laughs> oh, she doesn't know what a hug is. I feel so bad. What's the, uh... Obsidian! Pissing balls! I'm not gonna be able to do that. Unless I get more characters, oh my god. Addendum. Addendum. For all of her general ambivalence to everything outside herself, Nero is a remarkably caring parent. When I see her fret over her brood's well-being, I cannot, I cannot help but remember my own mother. It is a strange thought to have of a gigantic mother that threatens to immolate or devour you on a near daily basis, but it is what I felt. I know such sympathy would get me killed, but I cannot fathom the loss she must feel over her young that the Revenant carried away. It seems this great tragedy of our times that she's even the most powerful and aloof among us. Second dream. The dream came to me again last night. It was a different form, but I could tell it was the same dream. Or at least I was the same dreamer. I was standing in a great hall. Its walls stretched up above me, towering so high that the ceiling was made of clouds. Clouds! Fluffy little bastards! Um, each wall was golden bright and adorned with wondrous jewels as far as my eyes could see. In my hands was a goblet, carved from some lustrous material, wine dark and cold to the touch. Despite all the wonders that surrounded me, I treasured the goblet above all things, carrying it so as to not spill a single drop from its lip. Suddenly, the, ha the hall darkened and a filthy rabble surged into it. They struck me and abused me and tore the goblet from my hands. I screamed and drew a sharp dagger from my, lo my robe, slashing and striking out of them until the hall was dark with blood. Despite their losses, the throng pressed against me till I was forced out of the hall into a dim antechamber. I fought, but all around the horde struck back till I was completely broken. I collapsed, and the rabble rushed over me, eager to tear down, tear down the bright jewels from the walls. I lay for a, a long time, believing myself to have died. When I finally could climb to my feet, the hall was empty, the walls had been torn down and smashed, and everything was covered in soot and filth. I looked, but the goblet was nowhere. I wandered the hall for an eternity, crying out, but I was alone. The goblet had been taken from me. I sat down in the room and wept. Well then, that's, um, a bit awkward. So, that is the end of this, uh, little, uh, episode. Episode 1111, as in, uh, 2011, 1911, 4 plus 7 is 11. You know? So, yeah, that's the end of this episode. I'm going to see if I can do some of these episodes. Me <laughs> Greatest talker today. Me. So, yeah, I'm going to see if I can uh, go through and do some of the older levels. Um, get some of that delicious... What? What was that? I'm going to see if I can get some of that uh, delicious loot. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time, so peace out, and, uh, bye.